now let us consider another aspect let us consider cos 2 pi f naught t and we have f naught to be 8 kilohertz it is enough if you sample this at 16 all right. So, just for this to illustrate this point let us assume the sampling frequency is 24 kilohertz and hence x of n is cos 2 pi f naught you are going to replace t by n cap t right. So, n cap t is 1 over f s and hence this becomes 24 times 10 power 3 and you are going to get cos 2 pi by 3 n. So, this is the discrete time sequence that is going to result when you sample an 8 kilohertz cosine at 24 kilohertz all right. Then somebody has a different cosine that f naught happens to be 16 kilohertz and that person chooses to sample the signal at 48 kilohertz right. So, you have y of t to be cosine 2 pi f naught t where f naught in this case happens to be 16 and sampled at 24 and if you look at the corresponding y of n. So, this after all is cos 2 pi 16 times 10 to the 3 you are going to replace t by n cap t n times cap t is 1 over f s and this is 48 times 10 to the 3 this of course is cos 2 pi by 3 n which is nothing but x of n all right and hence if you look at the dtft be it either x of e to the j omega or y of e to the j omega. So, what is going to happen is remember you are talking about the infinite duration sinusoid you have infinite set of samples and omega naught will be 2 pi by 3. So, the point about this is that given this spectrum if I ask you what the original signal was whether this was an 8 kilohertz sampled at 24 or 16 sampled at 48 you cannot tell. Therefore, given the fact that omega naught is 2 pi by 3 to what true analog frequency does this correspond to that is is this 8 kilohertz or 16 you cannot tell unless you have the sampling frequency information. So, going back from this to the true frequency you need f s information all right. So, this is again really if you think about this this is no surprise because any frequency f naught which is in hertz which is the true frequency is going to get mapped to f naught by f s in the dtft domain right because of this division by f s you are normalizing things and hence if you take 2 f naught and sample it to 2 f s you will get the same value which is exactly what is happening here. Therefore, to go from this dtft spectrum to, to the underlying true analog frequency in hertz you need f s information all right and actually you have seen this exactly happen in your signals and systems course right. So, this is not the first time you are encountering such a thing and where is it that you were encountering the same thing in your signals and systems course.
okay hint uh, CTFS. more hint properties of Fourier series ah why do not you just tell me the property <laughs> it has been so long ago since I we learnt about Fourier series one year is a long time right and now we are coming to the end of the semester it is one and a half years now ok. So, what was happening there you had x of t had Fourier series coefficients a k. What were the Fourier series coefficients of x of c t? a k. So, if you look at the Fourier series coefficients as a sequence of numbers, you will not be able to tell whether these coefficients corresponded to the Fourier series representation of x of t or x of c t just as a sequence of numbers. However, if you plot this in the frequency domain with k remember these are occurring at multiples of omega naught and hence a k will in this case correspond to the location k omega naught right. However, in this case this is the kth Fourier series coefficient, but it will occur at k times omega 1 because the periodicity of x of t and x of c t are different and the fundamental frequency is 2 pi by cap t, cap t is different in both cases and hence this kth Fourier series component will occur at k times the fundamental frequency, but the fundamental frequency here is different and hence as a sequence of numbers you will not be able to tell just from a k information whether it is the Fourier series representation of x of t or x of c t you need the periodicity information to map k to the actual location and frequency. So, this is what is happening here is no different you need the sampling frequency information for you to know what this normalized frequency corresponded to in terms of actual hertz yeah question. Mm -hmm. So, in the Fourier domain the peaks will have certain amplitudes proposed to the effect. So, that again what happens? Yeah, that suppose I chose this is a very good point you raise. Suppose I my signal is this. I sample it at twice the frequency sampling frequency as compared to earlier sure my amplitude goes up by a factor of 2, but it so happens my original signal has been amplitude scale by half and I get exactly the same spectrum right. So, you cannot bank on that by the way to give some insight as to why when you sample it at a higher frequency the amplitude goes up remember when you sample two things happen one the periodic repetition is there the other is amplitude scaling by 1 over t right. Now, you need to have an intuitive sense as to why that happens not merely relying on ok the formula says so therefore, I will take it because it is there in the formula. You also need to have an intuitive feel for why this is so let us take this example. So, we have a signal like this say between minus half and half right and then this has a spectrum. Now, we are going to sample this right and uh, remember x of e to the j omega 
at omega equal to 0 is nothing but this. And you will get a certain number assuming you have sampled like this. Now on the other hand if you now sample this at a much denser rate, if you sample this at a much denser rate or rather a higher sampling frequency between minus half and plus half if you sample it at twice the frequency compared to earlier you will get twice the number of samples right and hence remember but if you plot this as a sequence of numbers you will get something like this. And now if you look at the spectrum at omega to 0 which is again the sum of all the sample values now you will be summing up over twice the number of samples as earlier and you will get a larger number. So this is the intuition behind why that 1 over t scale factor makes sense alright it is not just mere formula.